Hello my soccer universe, let's recap the action from yesterday's conference league and first things first you might hear it from my voice, I have a little bit of a throat ache so my voice is not uh, at its best. Gotta deal with that, sounds a little bit scratchy. Uh, it was overall an exciting uh, conference league evening except for the one game that I actually really wanted to be exciting, being a complete uh, bore fest in the sense that it was pretty much decided already at halftime but all the other three went into overtime i have two teams still standing in my collection and i'm working hard to get at least a jersey for each one of the semi-finalists but yeah as i said we had three overtimes and two of those ended in penalty shootouts uh kind of uh, in one uh, it was always going to penalty shootout that was the one between Fenerbahce and Olymp olympiakos which was actually quite a good penalty, penalty shootout in the sense that uh the young uh, olympiakos keeper really did his best to make this exciting uh and in the other one yes emmy martinez kind of uh, one moment one to reaffirm his status as public enemy number one in france by really endearing himself to the crowd. Also, slight <laughs> rule update. Uh, yeah, if a goalie sees a second yellow card in a penalty shootout, he's not sent off. I really wanted to see what happens if he gets sent off, but that would have been interesting because I don't think you can make any substitutions there. That would have been really, really, really interesting overall. But I want to get started with the a match in Florence between Fiorentina and Victoria Pilsen that never should have gone to overtime. I mean, uh, first things first, both teams are since the at least since the group stage unbeaten. So uh, in that sense, it was a high level matchup. However, Pilsen probably uh, is succeeding because they keep it very, very, very tight on the back, and that's how they frustrate Fiorentina already in the first leg and also now in the return leg uh, without almost having any impetus of going forward uh and it is down to fiorentina's finishing i mean belotti yes he came from from roma i think he's only one goal for fiorentina so far it's not a uh, looking good uh nico Gonzalez, kwame i can the entire forward line if fiorentina had a finisher i think they would be him higher up in serie a um one big scene was then in the 66th minute when kadu uh, makes a foul uh, on a Fiorentina player running into the box. I can't remember now the name. He basically steps on his heel. It's a red card, and from that moment on, there was only one winner. I mean, uh, it was just a matter: will Fiorentina break them down, or will it go into overtime? Uh, fortunately, uh, they broke them down, but it needed over over, over, over overtime. When um, in over overtime, then uh, we had a corner. The ball goes to as a kind of melee in the box, and Nico Gonzalez finally puts the ball away. Ninety seconds, second minute, and then early in the um, second half of over. over time it was at one point a five of one Icone running playing into Beragi who one times it into the net 2-0 fully deserved Fiorentina moving on to the semi-final of the competition where they were in the final last time and let's see uh, if they can reach another final that will definitely be an interesting one um, the biggest matchup definitely had to be Lille against Aston Villa. I mean, those were two of the three remaining fa fa favorites. Arc, or I mean, you would say Aston Villa, Lille and Fiorentina because they are from the uh, big leagues, whereas all the other teams are kind of of the smaller leagues, although I really hate that. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Lille already gave a very good account of themselves in Birmingham and they were by much the better team. Uh, at least in uh, regulation. Uh, they took a very, very deserved lead through Yasichi in the 15th minute. Uh, the game was a little bit rough as well. There were quite a few yellow cards. Kyrgyz uh, for Amy Martinez for the layoff game. And then also a spat between the two coaches in the 44th minute, both getting a ye ye yellow card, and like Emery going like that to Fonseca. Uh, tempers were flaring high. And then a 6 7 minute after Harrison Corner, uh, Benjamin Andre had had it in his 2 0 lane. What a beautiful header that was. I mean, just below the crowd, the, the crossbar, just behind the upright. Uh, really brilliant header. 2 0 Lil, all deserved this. Looked like uh, that Aston Villa going out, and then out of nowhere, uh, it was a cross in where uh, che che Chevalier and Andre kind of, oh no, Bentaleb collide in the box. And the ball falls to Matt Cash, who puts it in and equalizes in the 87th minute. 
Kind of a miracle. Um, I think there was then a shout for a penalty again. Matt Cash with his hand out. They probably should have given for a little. So a little really must feel hard done by by the way that the game went. In overtime though, there was a really brilliant save by um, Chevalier. Uh, I think it was a Douglas Lewis shot, and then on the re the rebound, how he got there, absolutely brilliant save. It goes to over uh, to penalty shootout, and the penalty shooter was. Um, how to say taken again completely over by Amy Martinez. Uh, Yuri Tillemans, I mean, uh, so will a win when it's also Yuri Tillemans steps up, uh, converts the first one, then um, Martinez saves the one by Bentaleb and sells and celebrates and kind of is taunting the crowd a little bit, you know, shutting sh 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 him up. Referee says, Go away there, he keeps doing it, gets his second yellow card, and this is a new rule. I personally was not aware of it, but I, I was sure this is all right. Um, that if you go in the penalty shootout, the first yellow card does not carry over into the penalty shootout. Because you want to avoid a goalie being sent off for two yellow cards uh, and causing there uh, a whole lot, lot of trouble. I think if it was a straight red card, and I wonder how this could happen in a penalty, penalty shootout, but you know, some really unsportsmanlike conduct. Um, that would be interesting for sure. I also think that, I mean, yes, he does all his antics. I mean, he tried to throw Pentaleb off by just running out and really, um, you know, acting uh, the ass that he can be, let's put it, let, let's put it bluntly. Uh, but when Pentaleb missed, he kind of yanked the ball in into the crowd and just passed Martinez. And the crowd, of course, hey, why, why didn't I think there he went into shutdown. So it was kind of also a little bit of a crowd. But crowd interaction, uh, yeah. He really instigated every, everything. Uh, at that moment on then, uh, all Villa needed to do is to convert all the other penalties. And uh, all Oli Wodka and Matty Cash did that. Jonathan David and uh, Gomes also did convert the penalties. And then Leon Bailey steps up and he's saved by Chevalier. Cabea then, Argentinian, also converts. It is level. Douglas Lewis steps up. Puts Villa in front. And then Benjamin André sees his relatively good effort saved by um, by Emmy Martinez, who then makes the stance. Again, everyone getting riled up, but Villa are through, and I don't know if they know how they got through there. It has to be clearly said, a uh, little would have probably on the balance or the two legs deserved to move on, but Villa remain in the comp comp competition and they remain uh, one of the favorites to win it all. Uh, the other pals should have uh, happened in Istanbul, and what an Awful match that was. I mean, this was a match where Olympiakos in the first leg had a 3 0 lead that Fenerbahce pulled two back. Kavici, after 11 minutes, had it equalized. And I thought that Fenerbahce might actually you know, uh, roll over Olympiakos. No. Both teams kept it really, really tight. Yes, maybe Tadish could have had a penalty. Potentially, there was also a nice counter attack by Olympiakos. Uh, they probably would have deserved a little bit more. But overall, the two teams were just governed by fear and they. It was all going for a penalty shootout. But that penalty shootout made up for many, many, many bad things happening in there. Uh, because the Greek goalie, Zolakis, could have saved four. I mean, it was only one penalty where he was not there. Uh, El Kabi had, had, had made it 1 0 for uh, Olympiakos, and Tadic sees his effort saved. And you know, those are the big names for fan for, for fan budget. El Arabe also he said so. But Chuai, I wasn't. He was there. He had his hand on, but Chuai, but it, uh, the penalty was so. So but Chuai equals Orta converts, and then Cheng Cheng is under. Also sees his, uh, his penalty saved by Solis. So uh, already a big one. Then Matsuma Mazuras gives Olympiakos the advantage, and the only penalty that Solis did not get through was uh, Jikus, uh, and then Rodinel had all the chances to uh, send Olympiakos on and his penalty is tipped by Levakovic on the underside of the crossbar onto the line. He claimed it was in. No, it was not in. I mean, he, he, if you see it, it really hits the line. There was even some chalk dust come, come, come up. What a spectacular save. And then it's Leonardo Bonucci. Yes, Leonardo Bonucci is now at Fenerbahce. Yeah, he left, uh, he, he left only on Berlin and he only came on for this penalty shootout. Always saves his one. 
as well. It was not a badly taken penalty, but I think once the goal is there, it was also an easy one to save. And so at least one Greek side is moving on uh, with Olympiakos. Final is held in Athens, so that dream is still alive, but you have to go through Aston Villa, which is probably a step or two too far. I would think. Uh, the other Greek team, unfortunately, Pauk, uh, they had no chance against Club Bruges at home. I thought that with the crowd, and you know, it's a great stadium, the, uh, the Tumbo Stasis the Stadium uh, can really get an energetic ad atmosphere. But Club Bruges just uh, controlled the game left and right. Uh, the defensive errors on Pauk's side were uh, glaring. Sabé, Assis Jutkla, yes. Barcelona tells them essentially 33rd to make it a deserved one. One in the judge just before for the half. Uh, same, uh, same thing. Uh, Skoras uh, shot is saved. It was potentially offside, but uh, when, when you see the, the replay, uh, it was already pretty clear that it's an all knock. And, and Jutka just taps it in, completely forgotten by the park defense. Then the ball of is brought down in the box, and you think maybe, maybe with there's a penalty coming, uh, Park might get some momentum going, and then yes, the uh, ball was offside. Park unfortunately out, but also it has to be said deservedly. So and Club Bruges are playing now Fiorentina, and if you have seen in, in in the graphics, it's a relatively tight one between Fiorentina and Club Bruges. I still would favor Fiorentina overall, but given that Fiorentina are missing so many chances and Club Bruges under new management actually look, I mean they have been looking a really really uh, well coached side against Park. That will be interesting. That will definitely be the more interesting one. I think Aston Villa, if they have a normal day, should beat Olympiacos and make it to the final in Athens. Uh, Aston Villa and Fiorentina, of course, are the favorites of uh, winning it at the moment. Uh, but you know, everything can happen. The um, two semifinals will be played on the 2nd and the 9th of May. It's 9 o'clock kickoff, so the, every, everything at the, at, 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 at the same time. So, and then the final late in May, as I said, at the new Ajax Stadium in Athens. In any case, that was it from a long, really, really long, did not help my <laughs> voice, let's put it that way, to have a short night, uh, Conference League evening, also Europa League evening, we'll talk about it in the next video. Please let me know what you thought about uh, these games, uh, who do you think will win it now? Will it be Aston Villa? The only English team left standing. The only English team left standing. Will they, will they do it or will they concentrate very much so on the Premier League to make top four? Because that's probably their own, uh, that's with only one English team left, the Premier League will not get a fifth spot. And that is the sensation in itself as well. Any case, if you have enjoyed this video, talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!